First, Nathan asked this. What about y equals x cubed? Okay. Hmm. Now, again, you're a bit sick of it, but I'm going to try a table of values. Oh, right? okay. Don't worry, I'll do the numbers for you. I promise I won't work your brain too hard. Okay. X, y. I'm going to do the same numbers. You see why this is such a useful tool? It does take a while, but it gives you results that you can't argue with, and then you can draw a shape off it, right? Okay, again, we'll start with the positive numbers because they're a bit easier. Zero cubed is zero. One cubed is one. Okay, two cubed. Two cubed. Two cubed is two times two times two again. It's eight. Good. Very good. And, and Carl. Okay, now, now think carefully. Let's go the other way, but watch out. There's a minus sign there, right? So when you cube it, it's going to become negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. That's what cubing means, right? Multiply three times. So what's going to happen? Um, these two negatives will cancel. But you'll be left with one of them. Right? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Two negatives become a positive. And then you're going to get negative A. So look at this. If I just plot this now, this is the shape that you get. It's a pretty cool shape. This is y equals x cubed. Whoa. Weird kind of shape. If you just look at one side, it looks like x squared, doesn't it? But the other side looks like minus x squared. It's upside down, right? And that's because when you cube negative numbers, you still get negatives. Whereas when you square negative numbers, right? When you square them, they're always positive. Yeah? I don't understand how the table it goes like minus 8 and minus 1. I don't understand how you got that. These two values? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So let's come back to this value because I've written that one down. Okay? Yeah. What happens here? I tried out x equals minus 1. Okay? So I put in minus 1 there, where the x is. Does that make sense? Still with me? Yes. Okay. So now I just wrote that out. This is minus 1 cubed. Minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1. Three times. That's what cubed means, yeah? But, see, see these two negatives? These two negatives? The two negatives, when you multiply them, they just cancel each other out. Two negatives make a positive, don't they? So this guy, you don't have to worry about him. And then you're just left with that negative 1. Okay. Now you can rehearse the same thing with this, right? Negative two. It's gonna be negative two times negative two times negative two. Okay. Again, two negatives are gonna cancel, and you get two times two times negative two, which is negative eight. Hence this value. Okay. So the twos don't disappear. It's the negatives that disappear. The negatives cancel each other. Okay. Four times negative two. Yes, that's exactly what it is. It's exactly right. Uh, uh, these two, they the negatives cancel, and they you just left with the two times two, which is the four times negative two gives you negative eight. Okay, good spot. All right, very last one, uh, just for a bit of fun. Where did I put my eraser? There is. Uh, the question was, what happens if if the x is first instead of the y? This will spin you out a little bit. And I'm just going to put it up there and not make too much comment on it unless you want me to. Here's what we're looking at. X equals Y squared instead of Y equals X squared. So I'll swap them around, okay? It's going to be sideways. Ah. It's sideways. Sure enough. And the question is why? Yeah. Or is the question why is squared? Anyway, sorry. Um, so, so here's the way that I would think about it. Here's a short way of thinking about it, right? When you get y equals x squared, you have this parabola shape, okay? Now, if you swap the x's and y's, what that means is you look at this shape and you turn your head sideways, right? To swap the x's and y's. So this becomes your vertical axis, and that's, that's the way the problem is going, and this is your horizontal one, because the x and y's are swapped. Horizontal and vertical have swapped, which means you look at it like this, and you're like, that's the parallel I got before. Right. It's just sideways.
You can also, I'm not going to do it because we've done it 50 million times. You can also draw up a table of values and sure enough, this is what you'll get. Okay. Um, why don't you think you have anything over here? Why is nothing going on over here? Because that's so what? Why aren't there negatives though? Like you're right, but why? Because negatives are on the left hand side while positives on the right and the question has no negatives. Because... But why not? Why not? I'll show you. I'll show you why. Let's try x equals a negative number. Give me a negative number. Any number you like. Minus 5. Minus 5. Minus 5. Minus 5. So I'm going to try x equals minus 5. x equals minus 5. So every, instead of x, I'm going to write minus 5. So minus 5 equals y squared. So that means, okay, what number, when you square it, gives you negative 5? And the answer is... Well, okay, you, you try a positive number, if you square it, you won't get a negative. If you try a, um, I, I rubbed it off. Yes. If you try a negative number and you square it, you'll still get a positive number. You'll never get a negative number. There's none of these numbers you can try. They're not on this graph. You need to draw a new graph. Um, that will work, right? So you can never put in a negative value of x. It just kind of explodes. You can be sitting on your calculator for all day, putting numbers into y and you'll never get minus 5 on well, yeah, this.